This is a training video for precision anchoring. So the first spot is to figure out where you're going to anchor roughly. Choosing Gloucester Harbor in this case. And then uh, next you need to actually pick your anchorage. And there's a thousand things that go into this, but you're looking at bottom type, uh, shelter from the weather, ability of nav aids to be shot, stuff like that. Try and make it as easy as possible for yourself by picking a good anchorage spot. Label your head bearing and your drop bearing in accordance with whatever navigation standards you're using. Um, putting them in highlighter, pen, makes them pop out. So now we have the basics laid down, an anchorage spot, a head bearing, and a drop bearing. Now we need to build it out from there. Right around the anchorage spot you need to build your uh, letting go circle and that's the distance from the hose pipe to the polaris or where the anchor comes out to where you're shooting bearings from. On a 110 it's about 20 yards which is the bare minimum on this chart so we actually plot the letting go circle. And then we lay out our head bearing. The head bearing is the approach bearing that you're going to use so pick something that you can easily see while you're shooting alidades and the OOD can have it in his or her sights as you're coming into the anchorage. You notice on this chart too, we picked our anchorage exactly on a longitude line. That helps. Um, so if you happen to glance over at the GPS unit, you get a good idea of whether you're left or right of track. Right now, you lay down the drop bearing. One key mistake that a lot of people make is putting the drop bearing right on the anchorage itself. It's supposed to be on the letting go circle, because if you picture yourself coming up to the anchorage, the alidade is shooting. Um, a certain bearing but your bow is 20 or 40 or 100 yards ahead of you um, and that's the actual anchorage spot so put it at the bottom of the letting go circle or whichever angle you're approaching from. So once you label your head bearing and your drop bearing that's about the bare minimum you have to do according to Bowditch and the Coast Guard nav standards um, as far as your EPQs for both of me but it's always a good idea to lay out um, a grid to help you actually anchoring so the first thing to do is plot out ranges to the anchorage in a convenient scale. In this case we do every hundred yards. This lets you quickly know if you're approaching your anchorage fast or slow as the reports are coming to the OOD. About 500 or a thousand yards is a good range to make an approach on an anchorage, you don't want to be too much less than that because you don't get a chance to have your plotting team get settled into the routine. Okay, so now we have ranges laid out as we approach our anchorage. We'll know how far away from the anchorage we are. Next thing you need to do is uh, build a grid of head bearings and drop bearings that are one or two degrees off from your actual one. Um, we sped this up because I'm sure you get the point by watching it, but building this grid allows you to plot very quickly your position without having to lay down actual lines of position. So for instance the bearing taker reads you a bearing of 101 instead of having to plot that you can just lay down a mark on the pre-plotted grid and you'll know how far off track you are. It saves a ton of time when you're plotting but it does take practice. So once we have our approach plotted then we lay out our, uh, our track lines coming into the anchorage from there from C. And in a perfect world, you follow your track right in directly to the anchorage, and you don't need to use the plot, but in reality, your ship is going to wiggle its way in as you're making course changes, and having this grid plotted will save you a good amount of time. So again, head bearing, drop bearing, lay down your grid, and that's about all there is to it.